Uh, hi everyone, thank you for joining today's bite-sized talk. So first of all, I'd like to thank um, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative for funding all NFCO events. And as always, the talk will be recorded and shared on our YouTube uh, platform and shared on Slack as well. So if you're not able to catch all of it now, you can catch it up later uh, in those spaces. And today we're glad to have Phil, um, who is a bioinformatician at Scilab Lab in Sweden, and also the author of MultiQC, uh, who will be presenting on troubleshooting Phil pipeline, um, NFCO pipelines. And it's going to be roughly a 15 minute talk, and then we'll have more of a Q&A session and discussion at the end. So feel free to use the chat box or unmute yourself uh, and post any question or comment at the end. Over to you, Phil. Thank you very much. Thanks for the introduction. Um, it's nice to be back giving another bite-sized talk. It's been a, a few months since I've done one. Uh, and quite a nice topic today, I think. I'm hoping that this will be quite a good resource um, for especially new people to NF Core who are just trying to pick up um, running Nextflow, running our NF Core pipelines and might be running into trouble. So the idea today is to just run through some of the common questions and queries that we see on Slack when people try and run pipelines and hit difficulties and um, kind of walk you through my personal typical kind of steps of, of what I do when something goes wrong. I'd like to point out that this talk is aimed at kind of end users, so people running pipelines. I'm not going to go into kind of, originally the title was debugging a failed pipeline, but it's not really debugging. I'm not going to go into how to look. I'm not going to go into the code of the pipelines themselves. <clears throat> I think that would be a good follow-on talk. Um, and also, like I say, like, like many of these talks, really, it's kind of this is my personal take on it. So I'm looking forward to hearing uh, what everyone says in um, in the chat and the discussion afterwards. Like, think about what kind of things you do if you're a bit more experienced, and, and if you have any suggestions. Um, and hopefully, that part of this today's talk will be as good as as my slides. Um, right, so I'll kick off. Uh, let's see if I can get Zoom working. Yes, because at some point things will go wrong. <laughs> um, I don't care how experienced a bioinformatician you are, how many years you've been using NextFlow, um, stuff can and will uh, go wrong always if you run enough pipelines. Um, so here, this is kind of your, your lifeline. So take a step back, take a deep breath, try not to. Uh, send your your keyboard through your computer monitor and uh and we'll walk you through how to how to get things up and running again so i've kind of broken the talk up into five sections these are the kind of steps i take um so the simple one is start small start simple start small um we kind of say this over and over again but it is never you can't repeat it too many times really uh we use this minus profile test we use that for all of our automated testing and basically that should always work pretty much. So if you are starting to use Nextflow or you're running a new pipeline for the first time, it's always a good idea to run this first with the profile test, keep everything as small and minimal as possible and check that it works because it should work because it should be passing on the automated tests. And so if it doesn't, then it means there's something wrong uh, at your end, basically, with uh, the way you're running Nextflow, with the config, with something that's outside of the pipeline itself. So it isolates where the problem is coming from, which is what this is all about. So start small, start, don't use some massive data set that's going to take days, just check that the pipeline runs as you expect with a, a minimal test data set. Um, also, if you've hit a problem, just check the basics. Uh, you don't have to go far in the Slack history to see that lots and lots of people's problems have been resolved by updating Nextflow. Um, <laughs> Nextflow releases come out fairly frequently, and within NF Core, we tend to use many of the latest features of Nextflow. Um, many of the latest features, features of Nextflow have come as a result of us requesting them, so it's not really a surprise. So um, the first thing I always do if something goes wrong is I just check that I'm running the latest Nextflow stable release. If you're running the latest edge version, then that's also interesting and maybe try with the stable version in, um, because that could be important for the pipeline developers to know. Then there's all the other like really simple stuff, like have you got enough disk space? Like pipelines will fail in weird and unpredictable ways if you run out of disk space. If you're using Docker, do you have a Docker daemon running in the background? Did you remember to start it? 
Um, you know, just kind of run through these basic things and often that will, that will get, you, get you up and running. And uh, wherever we see common things coming up within NF Core, we try and add it to the website on the troubleshooting documentation page. So if you haven't already, just have a scan through that and see if, see if what's happening to you is mentioned there. Okay, most people will do that stuff without really thinking about it. But next is to categorize what kind of error it is that you're seeing. So just because Nextflow fails on a certain step of a, pipe, a pipeline doesn't necessarily mean that it was that step, that it was that software tool which was responsible for the failure. Different types of failures happen at different times in the ex execution pipeline. So we're gonna we're gonna go through that now. So errors can happen basically before the first process kicks off. So right when you first run Nextflow, they could happen during that first process. So when it Nextflow actually tries to run run something, it, it fails. It could happen somewhere somewhere else during the run, and or something wrong at the very end. So these are kind of different steps. And one of the most common is before the first process. So you try and run Nextflow and it just kills, dies immediately. All of these examples, um, I have mostly taken either from myself or from searching the Slack history. So apologies in advance if you see one of your queries on Slack coming up as an example. I'm not picking on anyone. Um, it's just kind of you know typical examples. So, uh, so here, this is a, a very obvious one. Um, unknown config attribute project there. So Nextflow has found something in a config which it doesn't recognize. Uh, and the reason is that this particular attribute is only available in more recent versions of Nextflow. You can see at the top that this is running 0.27.3, which is years old now. So not very surprising. Nextflow isn't up to date. Use a newer version, it should work. This is very obvious. This happens right away. You've only got a couple of lines of output here. Um, but it's not always that obvious. You could be running the RNA pipeline like here. You get tons of output, it all looks good. It's nice and colored, everything's fancy, but you get a kind of really obscure error spat out. But just take a step back, go back up to the top. Sure enough, this version is not very out of date, but a little bit out of date. And that's enough in this case to, to make the pipeline fail. So next low version, always check that first. Um, remember, if you're new to Nextflow and NFCore, you need to tell Nextflow how to handle software dependencies. Out of the box, if you just run a pipeline without any arguments, Nextflow will expect all of that software to be installed on your machine, which is almost certainly not going to be happening. So you need to tell it, I want to use Conda, I want to use Docker, I want to use Singularity, or there's about eight different types of kind of uh, engines which we can use to handle software dependencies automatically for you. But you need to tell Nextflow which one to use. Uh, typically, we do this with a config profile. So here I've got test, comma, Docker. I'm saying run the test profile and use Docker to do it. Um, of course, you might want to use a different tool here, or you might have your own config, which defines the uh, which software tool to use here. So it might be the name of your institutional config here or something. Make sure that you don't have any spaces. Uh, if you have a space there, then it will just run profile test and ignore the Docker and uh, your pipeline won't have any software to use. So small thing catches a lot of people out, including myself. I've done it lots of times. <laughs> OK, so what very often uh, you'll get when you, something goes wrong, especially if the, the pipeline fails within the first process or, or within the actual execution of a pipeline, is uh, a lot of output. And this can be quite intimidating. Um, next. Flow really tries to help you with, with figuring out what's gone wrong. And to do that, it tells you everything it possibly knows about the step that was going on when it failed. And it's quite a lot of output, and this isn't all of it here. But just try and kind of take a pause and try and work through it. And once you get used to looking at these kinds of errors and break down the different sections, it, it, they're quite quick to skim through. And what we're really going for here is always finding the, the relevant part of the log, which bit is it telling you what's wrong. Here you can see the bit that pops out to me when I see this is command not found. Okay, so this was a step in a pipeline, the first step. Um, but it is, and it looks like maybe it's something that was wrong with RSEM here from the RNA pipeline. But when you look at this, I say command not found, this is almost certainly a software packaging problem. So this has been run without Docker. Nextflow doesn't know where to find the tool that it's trying to run. And so it, it exits with an error saying that the command is not found add minus profile docker or something similar, and this will fix itself. 
Um, other kind of typical ones within this first process could be something to do with actually submitting the job to your Qt environment. So here I'm trying to, or someone was trying to uh, submit a job to um, a Slurm HPC cluster using SBatch. And here it said, the error is the top caused by failed to submit process to grid scheduler for execution. So there's an SBatch error. And in fact, you can see under the command output, it actually tells you what was wrong. So again, this is not a problem to do with the pipeline. This is a problem to do with your config. Okay. So I kind of touched on this already, but let's break down that, that log and try and get used to what it's telling us because there's a lot, lot of text to look at here. But the, the structure is always the same. So we have at the top uh, information about where you were in a pipeline and what kind of error there was. So the top line says, okay, this is the process. So every pipeline is built up by lots of different processes that run in order. This is the name of the process that went wrong. And in brackets, you've got the tag, which in this case is the name of the, the file where it broke. And it says caused by, and that's kind of a summary headline of, of what went wrong. So here, Nextflow was expecting some output and it didn't get it. So it's expecting a zip file and it wasn't, wasn't generated. And then it says, okay, this is what I was running. This is the exact actual bash command, which to be honest for NFCore and for us is rarely interesting. <laughs> Most of the time you can sort of trust this. So, but, but that's like the resolved command that was run. And then you've got the exit status, which is the, yeah, the status that was generated by the command when it finished. Usually non-zero um, it means error and zero means success. But in this case, we got zero even though it was an error. Next up in the log, we have the actual output from that tool. So command line tools can generate two types of output in a terminal. You can have standard out and standard error, um, but for the purposes of this talk, they're basically one and the same thing. Uh, and so this is just telling us of so two different types of output that we got from, from VASQC in this point. So there wasn't anything on the command out, standard out, but the standard error gives us a, a big blob of text. And if you ran VASQC yourself manually in a terminal, if you ran VASQC, this is what would be printed out basically. Okay, so there's a bit of a misleading like red herring at the top. That warning message is actually not related to the error in this case. And um, for a bit, if you keep reading, it looks interesting is here. Okay, FastQC is telling us what went wrong. It's just kind of buried. It's saying your file is probably truncated. So this error is almost certainly uh, due to a corrupted file, a download that didn't finish. This again is very common. And you just kind of need to work your way through the log file and the output to figure this out and try and spot that little nugget of in interesting information in here. This is another example. This is running SAM tools. And again, same thing. Here it is buried in there, SAM tools sorts, truncated file. These are all examples I've pulled out of Slack. If, um, if you need to dig into this a bit more though, you can, you don't have to look, this is just the, the main output from Nextflow running in the terminal when you run the pipeline, but you can start to dig into this specific process a bit more. And that's where the next bit of log is useful. Um, here it tells you where that process was running. So every process generates multiple tasks and each task runs in a work directory in an isolated file system. And so here, this is the path to that work directory. And we can go in there and we can start to dig around in those files and see if we can spot anything that wasn't immediately obvious in, uh, in the summary log output we have here. Uh, so what's, the, what's in a typical work directory, an anatomy of a work directory? You have all the, the input files and any output files that were generated by the task, but you'll you normally have a core set of files which Nextflow itself generates. You have a bunch of files which just capture the output from the tool. So I've mentioned this already that you've got standard out and standard error and you have a file for each and then command.log captures both into one file, which might be useful if you want to know what order different stuff came out in. You have uh, files which Nextflow uses to, um, to kind of track and, and run the job itself. Um, the exit code file just captures that zero or non-zero value. Uh, you've got the trace, you've got the command.begin, which to be honest, I'm not sure I've ever looked at. Um, and then what's usually the stuff that's most interesting after the, the output from a tool is the command.run and command.sh. So the, the final one is the bash script, and that's just the resolved command, which is run. And you can try running that yourself on, on, the, on the command line, uh, if, but that won't use any of the software stuff like Docker and things. The command.run is what Nextflow itself actually launches, and that will use Docker and everything, and that should give you an identical error message. 
this is particularly useful to look at if you're using sbatch or you know a, an hpc job scheduler because at the top of that file you'll have the requests that were actually given to the cluster so if your if your cluster is rejecting your jobs because of weird um, memory or cpu requirements you can check in there look at the headers and then manually debug that okay you've looked through all of this stuff you you still don't really know what's going on maybe you found a little nugget of text which you think is the the smoking gun but you don't really understand what it means now is the time to kind of start searching and uh the first place i always start is slack our nf core slack um We've been using it for a few years. We have two and a half thousand users. There are, I don't know how many tens or hundreds of thousands of messages in Slack. There's a pretty decent chance that someone has come across this before and asked for help. So if you've, the, the key is to search for the right thing. But once you've got the, that little nugget, stick that into the Slack search bar and have a look. Many tools and errors will span multiple different pipelines and you're probably not a member of every single pipeline channel. So it's really worth searching there because maybe you hit the SAM tool sort error in, uh, I don't know, RNA-seq, and maybe someone has hit the same thing in the SARAC pipeline. So searching all of Slack is really, really powerful. Um, and then, of course, there's also Google, and you can ask, finally ask for help. Uh, so this is just a few screenshots here. You can see that, that truncated file error. If I stick that into, into the NF core Slack, you can see there's, there's stuff, people talking about it in RNA-seq, in SARAC, in viral recon. Uh, so having a dig through there might be helpful. And of course, uh, searching Google once you have the correct bit of text is, is obviously helpful. Okay, you're still stuck. Now it's time to ask for help. Um, there's good ways and bad ways to do this. So uh, what I'm going to take you through is the kind of like what I, as someone responding to help requests is, is kind of what makes my life easy, which gives you the best chance of getting a quick and useful response. <laughs> Um, firstly, if you can pick the correct Slack channel to post in, we have lots of Slack channels. If your pipeline is specific to, if your question is specific to a given pipeline, please ask in the channel for that pipeline, because the people in there will know the most about that pipeline. If you think it's to do with the config, post in configs and so on and so on. Um, if in doubt, you can always post in help or, and, uh, and someone will either answer you there or redirect you. Provide straight away as much information as you can. Um, this is really important and more experienced people tend to be used to this, but especially if you're new to the community or new to bioinformatics, you can kind of post the bit that you think might be wrong, but really out of context, it's almost impossible to help. So as a minimum, usually we'll need the full command that you use to launch a pipeline and any next flow configs you use, because that ties together to tell us what environment your, your error came from. Sometimes this can be quite a lot of output. Um, so if in doubt, post a short question, a summary, and then you can create a thread in Slack, and then you can kind of dump these outputs into there and it doesn't bloat and flood the whole Slack channel. Use markdown code blocks. Don't just paste in your text from the terminal because um, you want to use those triple markdown, triple backticks to do a markdown code block. This is just purely code formatting, but it makes it much easier to read your message for anyone reading Slack. Very easy to do once you're used to it. Um, and try to narrow down the issue as much as possible before you ask. So go through these steps we've talked through and come up with the, the best kind of question as you can and tell other people how they can get reproduce the error because that's how bug fixing works. Right? The first thing I do if I have an error reported to me, which I think comes from a pipeline, is I go and see if I can get the same error. And once I can, then I can work on it and dig into it and make sure I fixed it. But if I can't reproduce the error on my end, it's very, very difficult to actually fix anything. These are some of the things you, if you, if you fall foul <laughs> of, of these requests, you might start to see these things come up. And these are things where we've written the same thing a lot of times. So now, now we have like little helpers within Slack. And so every now and then I'll type more info and you'll get a little Slack bot message, which says basically what I've just been saying. Please tell us a bit more about how you ran NextFlow. Please don't feel offended if you get this. I send it to everyone. <laughs> uh, it's just a little reminder, like we're probably going to need more information to be able to help you. Um, we have one also about posting in the correct channel. And, uh, and if, you, if you don't format your code blocks nicely, then there's a risk that me or someone else might ask for, um, for, for, 
kind of better formatted ones in the future. I'm not really complaining. It's just trying to help you out saying, I don't know how to do this. Here are a couple of help pages. Right, you've gone through that and the people on Slack can't help you. Um, or maybe you think, you know, you've straight up, you're pretty sure that you've encountered a bug in the pipeline code. Uh, now is the time to move away from Slack and actually make an issue on the pipeline repository on GitHub. And this is where we track kind of problems, feature requests and, and bug reports so that they don't get lost because it's quite easy to lose things in the Slack. Um, you know, they just kind of disappear out of, out of sight when you're a maintainer and you forget about it. But if you make an issue on the repository, it's there and, and it keeps all of that discussion together. So please do uh, hit a bug report, click get started, and it gives you a template to fill in to, to provide all of the information that we typically need to be able to help. So title, description, and your terminal output, all the same stuff I've been hammering on about. Um, and same stuff really, give all the information that we are asking for, try and narrow it down as much as possible and tell us how we can reproduce your error. Uh, if you think you know the solution, don't be shy, you know, say, I think it's this bit here. And if you think you know how to fix that problem, even better, just make a pull request or make an issue followed by a pull request and, and just submit that fix yourself because that's the quickest way. And of course, that, that really helps to relieve the burden on maintainers as much as possible. And that's, that's the way that most of us who write code within and of course kind of got into the community. So we're very open to pull requests always. Right, this is meant to be a short talk and I've already gone over, so I'm gonna wrap up at this point uh, and let's see if anyone has any, any questions or any suggestions or thoughts about how, how they do this um, um, and, and uh, any, any cool ideas, basically. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Phil. Um, yeah, feel free to ask or comment anything in the chat box in the, um, or unmute yourself. Um, Hashi says you can provide Nixlo logs along with command and configs and also error traces. Uh, yeah, so that what, what Hashi was talking about there is I mentioned kind of what's printed to your terminal and, and that's a really good start and that's very much easier to read. Nextflow also generates a log file called .nextflow.log, so it's the hidden file and that's like the verbose version of that log and that, that is massive and fairly difficult to dig through but that has all the information. So if you can drop that file into Slack that really helps to, uh, to debug. Cool. I don't know if there's anyone who has another question or... Yeah, James is saying that file that I mentioned, .nextflow.log, that's generated where you launch Nextflow. So in the launch directory. Yeah, here Moritz is saying um, you can prefix a version of Nextflow to your command. So if you want to run uh, your pipeline with a specific version of Nextflow, you don't have to go and download, assuming you're running somewhere with an internet connection, you don't have to go and download a new binary or reinstall Nextflow or anything. You can just prefix the environment variable nxf underscore ver Nextflow version equals whatever version you want. Uh, and then carry on with your normal Nextflow run command. The Nextflow itself will automatically fetch that version of Nextflow and run with it. So if you want to check that whether it's a, a problem to do with the version of Nextflow you're running, uh, again, it's very quick to do that once you deal with that technique. Uh, so you just put it before the Nextflow run command or you put it in your config? No, put it before the command. If, if you prefer, you can also do, um, it's just a regular bash environment variable. So you can do export and XF uh, where, wherever you want, and then that will stick around for the whole of your terminal session. Um, but if you just want to do it for a single Nextflow run, you can just prepend it uh, before the start of your Nextflow run, whatever, and it will be used there. I'm not sure if Nextflow carries on using that version afterwards or not. You might need to run Nextflow self-update again afterwards if you've gone back. Thanks. 
Uh, looks like there's no one else with a comment or a question. So thanks, guys, and we'll see you next week for another bite-sized talk. Thanks, Phil. Thanks very much, everyone.